Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you are all well. Today we have a dedicated video to skirts and jackets combined. So this is, well, this has springboarded off a recent reel I did that I posted last night and it has performed so well so far um, in, you know, since last night, it's now like 11 o'clock this morning, it's had about 600,000 views. So um, it's obviously a much needed topic that people are interested in. So I thought I'd really kind of go into this in a bit more depth and expand. So the reel I've got on my Instagram is all about what top shapes to pair with skirts. Um, and that's not dissimilar today's top to today's topic, which is what kind of coats and jackets to pair with skirts. I do feel like this is quite a tricky area to navigate sometimes. Um, and I'd say it's probably easier to style um, trousers with jackets or coats because I think for the most part, most kind of trousers go with most kind of jackets. So let's talk about skirts and jackets. I've got some on the rail that I'll show you, talk you through and talk you through how I'm styling them. So I've only got three shapes of skirts because I think um, these three can kind of cross barriers and boundaries to a few different styles and you can also apply this or these rules to dresses as well. So I've only got three, like I mentioned, because I think like this, for example, is a straightish mini skirt, but I do think these rules could be applied to a slightly wider shape mini skirt or like a skirt kind of thing. Um, so that's why I've just gone with three, so I can really delve deep into it and share quite a comprehensive guide with you. So as always, I want to make these uh, videos as useful as possible. And I think one way of doing that, or the main way of doing that is by sharing kind of do's and don'ts, um, or I'm gonna share the don'ts and then the do's of what jackets to pair. So for the purpose of the video, um, I'm going to be wearing a white t-shirt throughout for some continuity. Um, and just to show you, um, kind of concentrate on the skirts really. So the first outfit I've got on is just a classic t-shirt, some simple strappy heels, and then you can kind of make this work for quite a few different occasions. If you were going out though, I would personally avoid, or in the daytime too, I would personally avoid a shorter jacket, like the green one I'm wearing here. Um, it's a crop jacket, and although I don't think there's anything wrong with this look, it doesn't look terrible, um, I just think the kind of cropped style with this skirt, it feels all a bit too short together. I'm gonna pop this back on the rail now. But yeah, I just feel like everything is too short, there's not much contrast to the look. Um, and it feels a little bit dated as well to have everything kind of short and short. So alternatively, what I would do for a slightly more evening look like I've got with these heels is go for a blazer. That would be my go-to jacket option. However, the key thing for me here to make it feel modern and fresh is for that blazer to be either the kind of similar length that the skirt falls at or slightly longer and to make sure it's a little bit oversized rather than too fitted because what we want to try and achieve and what we want to do is to create the contrast between the tighter skirt and your jacket and by having something a bit boxier and more oversized we've got the tight short skirt the oversized masculine style and it creates that really nice juxtaposition that stops um, the outfit feeling like you've made too much of an effort. It relaxes that short style of skirt. Um, hopefully that makes sense and you can see kind of side by side why the oversized blazer looks better than the cropped jacket. The same can very much be applied in the daytime too. You could definitely do this base outfit as more of a day look. I've paired it here with some loafers. You could go for sandals or ballet flats um, or even boots and tights um, and a knit if it's colder. But I'm showing you here with the brown crop jacket. Um, it just, again, it feels, there's something off about this, isn't there? It's, it's too short on short. Um, again, there's not much contrast in it. Um, and I think it feels also a little bit top heavy because you've got all the um, fabric at the top 
and there's nothing of length to kind of balance it out like the blazer did. So instead what I would do in the daytime, you could go for the blazer again depending on your occasion, but I did want to show you an alternative. I think with a short skirt, you could actually go for a longer coat or a lightweight jacket. In this case, this trench coat, it's not lined or anything, it's very lightweight. So you could definitely wear this with bare legs, kind of a mild day. So what this does that the previous jacket doesn't um, is bring the fabric down a little bit to create some of that balance. It balances out the shoes a little bit more as well. And again, I just think it feels a little bit more modern and fresh to have that oversized element contrasting against the skirt. You don't want to have everything tight and revealed. You want to have that contrast between something a little bit more loose and flowing, a little bit more elegant and casual at the same time contrasted against that short skirt um, creates a really nice youthful but modern look. Okay so the next piece um, I want to talk about is a pleated midi and you could do the same for any kind of a line skirt something that flows out a little bit more you could do the exact same thing follow the exact same rules for a dress that flows out a little bit more a midi kind of calf length these rules will apply to all of those um kind of shapes something similar like this it doesn't necessarily need to be pleated but um, I did want to show you this pleated example because I do think they can be quite hard to style. So for my first outfit of how I wouldn't wear it, I probably would avoid wearing a blazer with a pleated midi, especially a longer length blazer like the one I'm showing in the cutaway. Um, I think the fabrics compete a bit with each other. We've got the A-line skirt. There's quite a lot going on around the hip area. So what you're doing with the blazer is adding on fabric around the hips, which I think just feels a little bit bulky and it just doesn't sit quite right. And also the longer length um, of the blazer kind of, like I said, it competes with the fabric, but also chops your leg off at a very random point. Kind of shortens your legs a little bit because um, instead of going right up to the waist, like the um, skirt does in itself, you're cropping it off quickly with a longer length blazer like that. And another reason I would say to avoid a blazer, I think it does look a little bit too fixed and formal. If you were going to work and wanted to wear a pleated skirt, I'd suggest firstly pairing it with more of a shirt and then you could go for like a sleeveless boxy um, jacket over the top. Or if you did want to do a blazer, maybe make it a cropped blazer to feel a little bit more modern. So I would avoid that kind of longer length blazer for work. And I do th feel like it feels a little bit frumpy almost. Um, I don't like using that word too much, but I uh, just feel a little bit frumpy, especially if you're going to pair it with some kind of formal type shoes with the loafers. You've got a very formal fixed outfit from head to toe with the blazer. So what we want to do is kind of deconstruct that a little bit um, and make it feel a little bit more relaxed and less try hard. So what I would suggest pairing your pleated skirt with is more of a boxy jacket like the one I showed with the mini skirt. If you don't know what to pair that style of jacket with, a longer skirt suits this jacket really well because you've still got the length of the skirt and then the cropped um, just kind of shows off the waist area and creates a bit more of an hourglass silhouette which in turn creates a bit more balance. And like I said about the blazer, it cropped you off a little bit and added a lot of bulk around the hips, sorry, around the thighs. Did I say hips before? Hips and thighs, I suppose. Um, it adds a lot of bulk around here. The cropped blazer takes away from that bulk um, and brings the fabric up. And also I think this kind of cropped boxy style is a nice contrast between the wider length of the skirt. So you've got the wide skirt at the bottom, then you've got the middle, and then you've got the boxy on top. It creates that nice balance again. Um, I've gone for trainers with this look. Again, just as a little side note in shoes, I wanted to create something. Because the skirt is quite a formal skirt, I did just want to break that down a little bit. And you could do the same, sandals would do that same thing as well if you're going more into summer. So those are the few kind of reasons I think a cropped boxy jacket works well with this pleated skirt.
Alternatively, if you did want to go for more of a coat look with this, this is how I would do it. So personally, I would go for a smarter style of coat. I think a puffer style probably would work, but I think it maybe would be too much of a contrast between the smart skirt and the puffer coat. It might feel a little bit jarring. Um, so instead I would go for a smart coat, but what I would avoid is something like this first brown one that I'm showing you. So here it kind of falls above the length of the pleated skirt. So you've got that very awkward bit of fabric going on. So you've got the end of the coat, then you've got a chunk of pleated fabric, then you've got your ankle, then you've got the shoes, and all that in turn feels very unflattering. Again, it feels a little bit frumpy, um, but also cuts your legs and makes them look shorter and just feels a little bit awkward, like I said. So that's one thing. Another thing is the belted coat. I think as soon as you belt the waist, again, adds all the fabric here um, and emphasizes this and just creates a feeling of off balance, off balanceness. Um, just create that feeling of being off balance by having a lot of fabric that's bulked out here with the nipped in waist. So alternatively, the smart style of coat I would choose is something like this camel coat that falls around the same length as the pleated skirt. It doesn't have to be to the centimetre, but as long as you're kind of around that same area, it creates a nice streamlined flowing effect and you've not got all that breakage of fabric down the leg. Um, and again, this one is kind of a little bit looser. It's not really nipped in and fitted and that just really complements the style of the skirt nicely and doesn't add all the bulk that we've got. I think it's also nice to keep your coat open so you can see the flow of the skirt underneath. As soon as you fasten it up, I think we've got the same problem as the coat before um, in that it kind of adds a bit of bulk to the already pleated, slightly more bulky style of skirt. So yeah, those are the kind of styles of coats I would go for. With anything pleated, more flowing, addresses, pleated midi skirt, all of those rules can be applied to that. So finally, let's talk about our last skirt. Something a little bit more spring-like and summery is this mango skirt that needs zipping up and tying up. Um, but I got this last year and I wore it so much. Um, it was kind of like a hero buy, you know? One of those pieces that you're just so thankful that you ended up buying because it really works for so much. You can dress this down really casually, just t-shirt trainers, t-shirt sandals, or like a tank top even would look nice with this. Or you could dress this up, I think it would look so nice in the evening with some great earrings, strappy heels. Um, so it really is a versatile piece. I don't think it'll be around anymore, but this style of skirt really does come in handy. A straight denim midi skirt, but Again, the rules that I'm sharing can be applied to all kinds of straight or pencil kind of skirts or dresses. So I do think I've kind of covered the spectrum of shapes in terms of skirts and dresses in this video. So this is much straighter than the pleated one I shared. So let's talk about styling this. Again, very much like the pleated skirt, I'd avoid anything that is oversized that's not the same length as the skirt. Anything like this blazer, I absolutely adore this blazer by the way, but I just wouldn't wear it with the skirt. So we've got a lot of fabric again that falls round the middle, an awkward length, it's neither here nor there. I think you either need something that falls around your waist or that falls around the hem. Um, it's one of those, just like the pleated skirt really, to have that fabric in the middle, cuts your body off, it just feels awkward. And again, this very oversized shape of this blazer doesn't really lend itself nicely to the pencil skirt. It feels a little bit lollipop-like almost because we've got so much fabric on the top and nothing really to balance it out at the bottom. So that's definitely what I would avoid it with. Instead, I wanted to return to the green cropped jacket that I wore um, in my first one with the short leather skirt. So if you are going for a longer skirt, 
my suggestion would be go for a shorter jacket and vice versa with what I showed you with the short skirt. So um, I've got this cropped jacket on here. Again, it's nice because it just kind of falls around the waistline, the same area as the skirt. You can kind of see all the fabric of the skirt, which makes the outfit really elongating. So I would avoid anything kind of from hip length to maybe just below the knee. I'd avoid any length of coat or jacket around there. Um, I think there are very few occasions where you can kind of get away with that look. So the crop jacket is definitely something I think was most flattering with a kind of pencil skirt shape. But I also just wanted to finish it off by saying like the pleated skirt or just showing like the pleated skirt, a coat that falls around the same length or a little bit longer than a pencil skirt also really works. So like I said, with a longer pencil, midi kind of skirt or dress, either go cropped or shortish or go for something um, a little bit longer. And I would also say, this is actually my final tip just to note, about the short jackets with the longer skirt, just notice that the short jackets aren't wide short jackets. They do come in um, a little bit around the waist, they're not billowing out, because as soon as you have something that billows out, it competes again with the fabric at the bottom and just makes it all feel a little bit triangular going out. So try and get something that goes in slightly more like the green jacket, like the um, brown leather jacket, something that doesn't kind of go completely a jacket that's not like an A-line shape because it just won't work as well as something that kind of shows off and emphasizes the waist area a bit more. So I hope this guide has been useful. If it has, definitely let me know by giving it a thumbs up, but even better, leave me a comment um, and leave me a comment as well. What kind of pairings do you want to see next? anything you'd like to see from me in terms of styling tips and breakdowns of things. As you know, my channel is very much focused on maximizing your wardrobe and really making the best um, of what you've got and just creating easy ways for you to get dressed. So I hope it's been useful. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.